So tonight we are working in Pam Pastels and Colored Pencils on this cute jack-o'-lantern. This reference photo came from Unsplash, but if you want to download the direct link for that, I've got that listed in the video description so you can draw along with me. And for those of you who are about to complain, why can't you put the reference photo on the screen? I have limited space and I like what I have on my screen. I had someone last week actually ask me to remove the dog so they could have the reference photo. That's cute, but no. So um, they're, they're part of the live stream. Um, you can download the reference photo and put it anywhere on the screen you want. You can put it right in front of my face, it'd be totally fine. Hey, I am working on Canson Me Tens. This is a black sheet of paper, although it looks kind of charcoal gray in these overexposed lights. And I've, used, I've drawn everything out on tracing paper and then I just use a piece of transfer paper, which I had over here a second ago. Here we go. And all you need to do, and I just, if you want to trace it, just trace it from your computer monitor to make your life easier. Slide that under, and then you just have to lightly go over it. And you've got your perfectly clean lines with no eraser marks all over the place, which if you are working on colored paper, especially where you want to like leave some of that color showing through, you do not want to make eraser smudges. Not only does that start to damage the paper, you can see where you've messed it up from erasing too much. It will, leak. like those smudges are just, they're, they're not, they're not okay. So. Let's move that down there. And I'm gonna start with my pan pastels. And if you do not have pan pastels, just skip, you can do colored pencil for this. It's totally fine. So we're gonna pull the lid, which is stuck for some reason. There we go. And let's see, I had a, over here somewhere. Where did I put it? There it is. So I'm going to start with the upper pumpkin and let's start with the lighter color. So one side is my dirty, this is the soft tools bought from Pam Pastels and that camera is skipping like crazy. I may have to reset that, but I just flipped over the dirty side so I can use the clean side now. I wanna get as much use out of these as possible. And I am going to start with some of this red oxide type color, which is, oh, I am lucky that did not fall off the, let's rearrange. I've got too much stuff on my desk. There we go. You can kind of see my Pam Pastels there. Let's grab some of this and I'm gonna throw some red in there or even magenta. I'm just mixing a few colors and a little bit of black. And I'm going to start with these darker, oh, I lied. I was gonna start with the light. Well, I guess I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with the dark. And I'm gonna put some of these darker shadows in there. Now the big thing with this is going to be getting contrast. The reason that this guy, we want him to look like he glows, the way that you, or the reason or way that you get that is by that super high contrast between your lights and your darks. Again, mixing some red, some red oxide, a little bit of black, getting that nice dark color. Now, one of the things that I see people worry about a lot, like this color I just mixed is not the exact same as those. It is close enough. Close enough is, well, it's close enough. We have a tendency, especially if you're newer, to get really worked up over getting the exact same color. It does not need to be exact. What I wanna focus on are my values. Are my lights light enough, my darks dark enough? That's what's gonna make the difference. Having the perfect shade of brown, not a big deal. Is it brown? Great, close enough. And while I've got it out, let's get some of the darker color in the pumpkin on the reflection. And if you ever wanna take your own photos with reflection, things like this, it's actually not hard to do. Put a piece of glass on a black piece of paper, turn the lights off. I mean, obviously there's a candle or a light inside of this. Like it's really easy to do, but that reflection is just put glass on it, something reflective. Um, if you want a white, so it actually ends up not being white, it ends up being just the colors of the glow around it. Candles, so cool on a white um, dry erase board. That is one of the best things to take photos on. You get some really cool effects with the reflection. You wanna to remember too, the reflections are not just evenly reversed from whatever the subject is. And I've seen people do that a lot. That used to be an old thing when people first started with Photoshop, they would just flip it upside down and think, oh, it's the same thing. It's not because the angle is going to completely change depending on how you're looking at that reflection. So it's not just an exact reverse of this. I mean, even here you can see where the eyes are a completely different shape because you're coming from under more. It's a completely different angle. can let that black show through a little bit more on the reflection. And the smudge, I'm gonna smudge this glow out a little bit. 
I don't care if that's exact, close is close enough. You hear me say that all the time. So just looking at that reference photo. Look, already, that's actually a decent base layer to get started. You got a lot in there already. Okay, I'm gonna wipe this off and I have a Viva paper towel and old rag works as well. I'm just gonna wipe that off between colors. And if it gets too muddy, of course I can switch, but I'm gonna put colored pencil on top of this so I'm not too worried about it. I'm gonna get some of this bright yellow and mix some white in with that, which you can't really see when I mix the white, but just know that that's what I did. And let's come through. White will have to go over that. And I'm just using the tip of that for the mouth. I'll clean up my edges with the pencils. And I'll be using colored pencils. And I have people ask pretty much every time, why don't I just use pastels? Stick with pastels since I'm using Pam Pastel Base. Because regular pastel pencils, the, there's a dry chalkiness to them that just gives me the heebie-jeebies like you wouldn't believe. I cannot, I turn into the biggest whiny pansy. Like I can't, I just can't handle the feel of pastels. I love the look, but I'm weird. So that is why. So here, darker orange. But the pan pastels, like that can get all over my hands. It doesn't, I mean, it's dirty, which I don't love because again, I'm weird. But it doesn't, like the feeling doesn't dry me, freak me out like the dryness of the pastel pencils. And if you're looking for lessons with pastel pencils, check out my friend Jason Morgan. He has great lessons. He's amazing. If you like wildlife and pastels, that is definitely who I would recommend you check, check out. And I'm just using straight orange for some of this. So now again, I'm just going over and making that orange a bit brighter. Now we've got that same darker orange. I'm gonna use that right around the edge. I'm not gonna to do too much of the orange in the mouth. That's gonna to get too small. That'll be easier to do with my pencils. And now we'll start doing some of the other oranges around the pumpkin. So most of the colors around here, these are really gonna be more of my violets, burgundy colors, and then as we get out towards these edges with the glow, it's really more of a red red. So we look at that and think pumpkin, orange. Yeah, but not there. Like the orange is gonna be on the inside because that's so dark, we're gonna be using more of, that is not on camera again. There we go, kinda. I did not set that camera up well, did I? I'm sorry. So we're gonna go more with the red. We may even be pulling more of the red oxide in there, but we want it to be kind of dark. A little bit of orange, not too much. Shall I probably layer some of the orange after the red's in? There we go, that looks great. And most of the pan pastels are fairly opaque. So they show up pretty well on this black paper. And actually, let me see, now that I've got a little color on there, let me pause for a second and see if I can fix this camera. Um, I have it on auto exposure. Oh, that's way better. That actually is really accurate. Wow, it is rarely, that, or very rare that these cameras are that accurate to what it looks like in person. Yay. Hopefully it stays that way and doesn't adjust as I keep working. Sometimes it likes to adjust itself. Okay. So we've got this brighter orange there. Now some of what I'm doing with the red, it is light enough, it just doesn't look like it because what's next to it isn't dark enough just yet. I'm just holding this to the side very much like if I were working with a palette knife to get these thinner areas. We've got more of that bright red 
such a pretty red. We've got that bright red right in here. This red is actually perfect because it has an almost orangey tint to it. I'm gonna let that fade up a bit. I'm gonna pull a little bit of that red for the reflection as well and through here. I don't wanna to go too crazy with it. I'll have to darken some of that back up. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of the red mixed with the orange again. Just to lighten the bottom some. So this is a combination of my orange and red. And now I need to darken some of these areas. I'm gonna use some magenta, red oxide, a little bit of red, and a little bit of black. So we need to darken in here. Actually, I think that's gonna be easier to do with my pencils, honestly. Let's go with straight black and see if that'll darken it. Now, black is not normally my go-to darken color. It just, in this case, with the black background, like that's what works. But normally, if I'm using, especially with oranges, purple would be my go-to. But again, black background, so we're, we're a little bit different than what I would normally reach for for shadows. I just don't want you to think, because a lot of people, especially if they're new, they think that, oh, shadow black. I mean, you can use black, but it's typically gonna be a, a lot more flat. More often than not, your purples and magentas are gonna be a lot better, and I will be pulling purples and magentas into this when I start with the pencils. I'm gonna soften some of these edges with the white. Some of that I'll do with the pencil as well. And then we have the definite black line. I'm just gonna get the edging right in between these two. Somebody asked if you can wash these sponges. I've heard some people said they did. However, I find I burn through them faster than I would even bother washing them. Like they're fairly kind of delicate. So I don't personally, and I always get somebody mad at me, like, no, you're being wasteful. I mean, go for it. But I use them enough that I'm burning through them faster. Like washing them is not going to help them last longer in my case. I say just get a big pack of them. For when they're all used up and starting to fall apart, I just replace them. And it depends on what type of paper I'm using. In this case, with the Canson Me 10s, they last a bit longer. When I'm working on sanded paper, they, I definitely burn through them faster. Okay, and I need a little area with white. I'm just gonna grab one of my little spongy guys. I don't use these, these are the, well, they're called, it's fallen out of the thing, soft tool applicators. They're like little makeup applicators. I don't use these too often, and you can use just makeup ones, but they're a little bit awkward to use because they're so tiny. Like it's easy to hit your fingers when you're trying to use them. Whereas it, like, see how that's flat versus this, you've got a big gap under your fingers as you're working. So you're not hitting your fingers on it. Put just straight white, putting that on pretty thick. And then the inside of the mouth I'll do with the, with the pencils. Okay, so that is it with the pan pastels. Let's go ahead and spray this. Move my phone out of the way so I don't spray my phone. I have done that way too many times. And I'm just going to need to do a couple of light coats over that. You can see with the Spectra Fix, it doesn't really darken it. A lot of fixatives do. And then I'm going to hair dry this. And because it's taped all the way around the edges, the paper, which is inevitably going to warp because Canson Me Tans is like super absorbent, it'll dry completely back flat into shape because it's taped down. Now, if you don't hair dry this, you just let it dry on its own. Even though it is taped down, it doesn't always dry totally flat. Sometimes it'll buckle a little bit. Drying it, I mean, not only is that speeding things up, but it makes sure it goes completely flat. And the tape that I'm using is a pH neutral. It's an acid-free tape. So this is safe to use on your artwork. I don't recommend using like blue, ma my nose itches, blue masking tape or like painter's tape because that leaves residue that can eventually cause issues with the artwork over time. It may take many years, but it's still on there. That like t all tape leaves some residue. Some framers will tell people don't use any tape. It's never safe. If you're gonna, I mean, I have, I have to use it for this. Like that is the only option I have. 
just go with an acid-free pH neutral. Now your other alternative, even if you wanna use like a blue painter's tape, I could just cut this off. I could make my paper a little bit larger and when I tape it, when I'm done with the artwork, just cut off wherever the tape was. That's another alternative and then you can just pretty much use any masking tape you want as long as you didn't leave it on for like years before you removed it. Okay, so now let's go ahead and switch over to the pencils. Let me put my pan pastels away. Now if I need to come back and soften something up with my pan pastels or change something later, not a problem, I can go back over the pencils with it. So I'm starting with my polychromos. I'm probably gonna need, we'll see. I may need to grab my other pencils. I'm just, and the reason that I'm going with polychromos, you can go with any of your, your colored pencils. I could use my Caran d'Ache Luminance, my Derwent Light Fast, any of these would be fine. The reason that I'm going with the polychromos is I already had them out and I'm extremely lazy. So it, as long as this doesn't cause me problems, I'll stick with this. Although I don't have any glassine over here, do I? Iced tea, sorry. In case you're wondering, decaf green tea mixed with raspberry hibiscus, all of them are by stash. Oh my gosh, it's such a good combination. I do three bags of the decaf green to two bags of the hibiscus. I make a big, huge uh, thing iced tea. So it's decaf, I can drink it all day, all night, no problems, and oh, is it good. It doesn't need sugar, it doesn't need anything, it's just tasty. I should put that as a, a, when I edit this, I will put a, I will put affiliate links in the video description. Okay, so let's see if this is gonna be bright enough for me. I'm gonna use, right now this is Cream by Polychromos. So I'm gonna lightly go over, actually I need to get some darker oranges. I'm almost positive I'm gonna have to stop being lazy and grab my other pencils because, yeah. Okay, sorry, one more, one more break here. Let me grab my other pencils. I already can tell, like there's a specific orange that I want from my Caran d'Ache Luminance. So the Caran d'Ache Luminance, it's not just because they're more opaque, so they'll work really well for this. It's also that they're um, the specific colors that I wanted. Sometimes that there's just a specific color in a brand that is perfect. Um, what am I looking for? Eraser, or no, pencil sharpener. Those are not the same things. That one's sharp. This one is not. So the Caran d'Ache Luminance, that we've got some amazing orange colors in here. This one, okay, if you could read them. Um, this one, the writing is horrible. Cornelian, I think this is apricot. Permanent red and orange. So orange is the main one that I wanted first. Oh yeah, that is just showing up so much better. So we're fading, we've already got that really light color in there, and then I'm gonna switch over, this one is my cornelian, and then I'll switch over to that permanent red as I move my way out. So I've got that nice transition from the really bright to the definite orange. And whenever you're working on black paper, the color's never gonna be as pure as it would if we were on, I can zoom that in a bit, if we were on a white paper. So if you really wanted these colors to glow, you would actually be better off starting, come on, get in there. Starting with white paper, that means you're gonna have to fill your background in with black and that is going to take forever, but that's gonna give you that more pure bright orange because you're up against the white of the paper. Um, I should get white out, speaking of white. My pencils are super short. I am going to need to order some more sometime soon. So we've got that definite edge, some little ridges inside there. And then we've got, what is this, the permanent, yeah, permanent red as I get out to the outer edge. I don't want to go too crazy with that one because that's going to darken it up more than what I want, but I do need it a little bit darker. That gives us a really nice transition. And then I'm going to use these same colors right now. We can use that on the inside of the nose. Let's see. And then, so I started with that cream with polychromos. Now I'm gonna go with, this one is I believe just orange, no, cornelian. Right around this edge. 
and then I'll darken around that after, which will make that stand out that much more. A little bit more white in here. And then let's do the inside of the mouth. So we've got this brighter cream color. And this cream with polychromos is really perfect. Okay, now we're going to switch over. I'm going to use the orange. Just keep looking at that reference photo. Doesn't need to be exact. We just go for close, try to get those variations and values. And I'm adding a decent amount of pressure at this point. I am burnishing. I'm not using a super light hand because I actually don't plan on doing a million layers over here. So I can push a bit harder right off the bat. And a little bit on that outer edge here and these guys. Now I'm going to switch over. This was, I believe, Cornelian. Yeah. We've got even darker here. my mouth shape is not exact. I don't care. It's a pumpkin. Like that's not something that I'm going to spend a ton of time making exact to the photo. Close is close enough. I'm going to go to the permanent red now. Um, if I were doing a portrait, then yeah, the mouth needs to be exact. But on something like this, I mean, we all carve them a little bit different. There is no need to waste too much time trying to make that exact. But I do want to pay attention. Where are my lights and where are those darks? That part I care much more about. Okay, and I think, yeah, this color is good. This permanent red is great for that glow. Actually, there's a color called Pompeian Red I need to grab. I think that's going to be really good over this by uh, Polychromos. Just cleaning up these edges. I want to make sure that that white line is completely covered. So the white line from the transfer paper, see how I can just go right over that. You can't see it anymore. I wouldn't try to erase that. It's not going to erase well, but like right there where it's a little too dark, no big deal. I'll just go over that with black, but it needs, the pencil has to go over it to really um, get rid of it. So I'll switch over to orange. The light is really bright just along there, a little bit on that edge. A little bit there, and a little bit here. See, these are the things you want to pay attention to on your reference photo. That is all going to add together to give that more realistic lighting look that we're trying to get. I've switched to a darker orange here. And where is that Pompeian red? Pompeian red? I don't know. I don't say words right. See if it'll show up over this much. Yeah, kind of. It's not as bright as I would like, so that was a flop. It's a good idea. It just didn't, didn't show up enough. So I'm using my orange. I'm going to lighten this a little, and then I'll go over with the reds again. But this will give me a lighter look on some of this. A little bit of a highlight right in here. And I'm going to switch over to the darker orangey reds now over that. But it'll help those to stand out more. If I just did the darker red, it's not going to show up as nicely, not over the dark paper. You can do the same thing by putting white first, but if you put white first, your end result is going to be more of a pink uh, pastel type color. Just not what I wanted there. So 
I'm gonna switch, this one is my cornelian. I'm gonna get, use the side of that, just kind of lightly create my lines, the, the glossy, glassy look. I need to define these areas a bit more. I'm gonna go around those edges, but this is not as crisp at all as the upper mouth. This is much more out of focus than the actual pumpkin, the reflection I mean. I don't know why I'm rewording that. You guys knew what I was talking about, right? Let's brighten the center of this too. So this is apricot. So it's not quite as bright as the cream color I use, but it definitely shows up nicely. We've got a little bit of a brighter area here and here. And then we've got darker areas around it. Dragon's jumping around back there again. And that is really giving me a nice color transition. Okay, and I want to darken some of that up. I'm going to start pulling some magentas. I think I want to go with polychromos for that. We'll find out. So I've got magenta caputmortem for sure. That is definitely going to be a go-to. My gosh, dragon, I'm not letting you out. Please stop ruining that aloe. Did you just break another leaf on that? So we've got some kaput boredom. Let's see how this looks. That's good for darkening where it's not too dark, but I'm gonna go over that with magenta too. And this one is actually called magenta. Hey, they named it something I would have named it. That's unusual. Oh, this is perfect. So pretty much any time I'm using oranges, I'm gonna use magenta. They just look so pretty together and it gives you a really nice richness, which is not showing up great on camera as far as that more magenta tone, but it's there. Yeah, this is great. And I'm pushing pretty hard with this. Cleaning up any areas where the white of that transfer paper showed through. The little board is rattling. You wonder what that is it's over here it's definitely me and it's definitely annoying so same thing i'm gonna use some magenta here and let that fade into the black i need to get the hint of the nostrils on this side that was kind of here just the hint i don't want it too much A few areas of that. I want to try, um, let's see, got some brighter magentas with Karen Dosh. I wonder how opaque those will be. Let's find out. Oh, and a pink. Yeah, it's not really much different than the magenta with the polychromos as far as on the black paper. Very similar. So that one was a flop. Let's use a little bit of pink to get kind of a shiny spot. That works, kind of. Yeah, I think that's too pink. Nope, I changed my mind. I'm going back to my apricot then for the highlights there. It looks just white on camera, but it's more apricot. Uh, nope, that is not, where's the orange? There we go. This one's cornelian. 
pull that magenta right into it, thin that out a bit. Using the cornelian again, pulling some of these teeth up, kind of smudging this area here. Look how much more rounded this is at this angle. Completely different. I'm gonna soften some of that with the black um, pan pastels. Actually, probably just with, yeah, with what's already on the brush, softens that out nice. I didn't even have to reload it. Okay, and let's get that black cleaned up really nicely. Just about done with this guy. I'm going to pull a little bit more black in here. Again, I'm adding a decent amount of pressure. And it's not that the reference photo has black right there. Like, it's not actually black on the reference photo, but because my background is so dark, I just think it would look nice, creating a bit more contrast. Remember, you are the artist. If there is something that you think, oh, that's a little different than the reference photo, but I also think it would look really good, go for it. I'm going to put the magenta over it though so that it's not too flat, but it is nice and dark now. I'm going to take a bit of magenta right around that black so it transitions into the orange. Just a couple more touch ups. Get a little bit brighter in here. Just using white right on top of that cream. So it's not really making it white, but it is brightening it up a whole lot. Don't put it everywhere though, because we still wanted a lot of the darker transitions with the oranges. And I'm gonna use, where's, there it is, my permanent red. Actually, I should sharpen that pencil first. Let's clean up those edges a bit more and we're about there. Geez, we're only 40 minutes, one minutes in. This was a quick project. I can spend a little bit more time fussing over details. So this is that darker red. See how I'm just cleaning those edges up. I'm gonna pull that out and overlap that over those magentas. Gives it a warmer glow to them. Actually, how much brighter do I want those? Do I have a, let's see if I've got any reds that are really opaque with my Karen Josh. Uh, I think you're just gonna darken it. I don't think you're very opaque. Ooh, you look like a maybe. Scarlet, that's gonna be my go-to. Let's try some of this. Oh, that is perfect, and that shows up really nice. Just that little bit of extra red punch. I don't know if, it looks kind of more orange for you. On mine, it's much, much more like red, red. Like fire red. And it shows up really well because of the light colors that are under it. I'm going to take that red right around the mouth and let that fade into the darks. I need tape to shut this rattle up. Let's grab some apricot and make this stand out a bit more. And I'm gonna put the scarlet over it. 
So it stands out, but it's not too apricotty. Yes, that is a word now. And I don't know if I'm gonna use orange or probably orange. Back over some of this to lighten. This is burnished pretty well, so everything as I go over it, it's coming out really smooth. This area, let's go over the black there. Then I'm going to take magenta and go over that. Okay, there has to be tape somewhere. Because I'll steal it off this. I don't think that's going to be enough though. Let's find out. Maybe. Oh, I think it did it. Kind of. No, that's not enough tape. it that way. This again is just that magenta. And I'm going to come up here with the orange again. It's going really hard here. And then I'm going to go back out into the carmine. And again, pushing really hard, really burnishing that. Let's get that nice, smooth glow. And then the red, this one is the uh, scarlet. I'm going to sharpen that pencil one more time. Just going through edges, cleaning them up. That pencil needs to be nice and sharp so I can get these clean edges. And that needs to lighten. It's not standing out enough. So if somewhere, if you look at it and it doesn't feel like it's bright enough and you just can't get it brighter, it's because what's next to it is not dark enough. Same thing is in reverse. If it's too, if, you, if it looks too light, like, or too dark, no. If you can't get it dark enough, what's next to it isn't light enough, and then the reverse. Um, let's see. Let's sharpen the magenta again. It's darkening up and cleaning a few of these areas up. Not all the way around. He's pretty cute. I think he's about done, almost. Just touch up where these highlights are up here. Cute little holiday pumpkin. Or if you're weird like me, something you'll hang all year round. I like pumpkins. I keep pumpkins out all the time. I don't keep jack-o'-lanterns. I have one jack-o'-lantern that stays out. I lied. Never mind. I'm weird. I keep them all out. See anything I want to touch up? It look, I keep looking at the screen and it's a little bit more orange from what you guys are seeing. Let me see if I can adjust that a bit. Actually, I'll probably just show you over here. So that is, yeah, that's a bit more accurate. There is the finished jack-o'-lantern. See, much softer. He looks much better in person. They always do. That camera is actually kind of terrible for getting accurate artwork, but there you go.
learn to paint and draw, but you don't have any experience or your drawing skills aren't that good, join over 1,100 students and follow along with over 300 painting and drawing lessons. There are over 675 hours worth of lessons and new ones every week just waiting to turn you into a master. The great thing about these classes are that you get to do them from your own home in your own time. If you're taking in-person classes, often it's very hard where you're either falling behind, you're trying to rush to keep up with other students, or you're working faster than the other students waiting for them to catch up to you. With my classes, there is no time limit. You can work at your own pace, whatever feels comfortable for you. 